In this presentation, we will focus on the history of DBMS. Let's directly step into the topic of the day, the history of DBMS. When we talk about the history, I have given a timeline like this, starting from 1950s and it ranges till 2000s and even more. And we are going to see what happened in every decade in terms of the development of the databases. Why waiting? Let's start focusing on the history of DBMS. Basically, information processing and the automation in the information or the data processing is the backbone in the growth of computers. Starting from punched cards to all the latest technologies and tools that are available till date, Everything needs to store and process the data in order to make it as a meaningful information. In the year 1950s and the early 1960s, we can see that for storing the data, we used magnetic tapes. These magnetic tapes were used in the year 1950s and the early 1960s. Let's take an example data processing task, the payroll processing. And this payroll processing was automated with the data stored on magnetic tapes. And this involved reading of data from one or more magnetic tapes. And these magnetic tapes were sequential in terms of data access. So we cannot access any data directly on the magnetic tapes because it is a sequential storage where we need to access the data sequentially. And because these magnetic tapes were sequential in terms of data access and the data sizes involved were more than the primary memory used. And we know all the data items whichever we want to work on should come to the primary memory in order to work with, isn't it? In that case, the data sizes involved were more than the primary memory used. Hence, for processing the data, it involved reading the data from one or more magnetic tapes and also merging of data were involved which added the real complexity to the system. And in the late 1960s and in the early 1970s, HDDs, the hard disk drives, found a widespread usage. So we had the power of direct data access when compared to the previous technology, the magnetic tapes. So in hard disk, we can directly access the data. So hard disk is not an example for sequential data access. It is an example for direct data access. It can also be termed as random data access because we can access the data randomly. I mean, we can access data at any place. So we were able to navigate to any position on the disk and thus the data access were freed from the sequential access. And during this time, the relational databases were born and the developer of relational model, Edgar Frank Cord, defined the relational model and non-procedural ways of querying data in the relational model. And this effort from Edgar Frank Cord has led to hide the implementation details from the programmers which we call as data abstraction. In simple terms, data abstraction means hiding the complexity. And for the work that has been carried out on the relational model, Edgar Frank Cord has been awarded the prestigious ACM Turing Award. And in 1980s, this relational model were used in many commercial products by overcoming certain drawbacks that prevented its use in the practice in the initial days. I mean, this relational model was not widely used in the initial days of introduction. Whereas, after overcoming certain drawbacks, then the relational model were widely used in commercial products. And relational databases were so easy to use, it replaced the network and the hierarchical model which were tied closely to the underlying implementation. What do we mean by this network and hierarchical model were tightly closed to the underlying implementation? See, this model Whenever any changes is made on the model level, it involves a series of changes that needs to be deployed at the implementation level also. So they are highly dependent on each other. And also in the year 1980s, we can see that there were some research going on the parallel and the distributed databases, even on the object oriented databases. Coming to early 90s, we can see SQL. The structured query language was primarily developed for decision support applications and many database vendors have introduced parallel database products and also object relational support for the databases. And this is in regards to early 1990s. But during this 90s, we can also see an explosive growth of the internet and the world wide web. And databases were in a position to support high transaction processing rates with 24 cross 7 availability and very, very high reliability. 
It means there is no downtime needs to be acquired even at the hardware level or at the software level for the maintenance activities. Downtime means suppose if we want to carry out any maintenance activity, maybe a hardware replacement or software upgrade or any other maintenance activity, we need to acquire a downtime on the server as well as from the software level from being used. Only then we can proceed with the maintenance activities. And this 1990s have seen a scenario where availability and reliability have increased tremendously. So it means there is no downtime required for scheduling a maintenance window. And coming to 2000s, where emerging XML and the associated query language XQuery was evolved as a new database technology. And introduction to auto admin features have added advantages to the database technology. Talking about this XML, the extensible markup language, this language is being widely used for data exchange and also for storing the complex data types. And several novel distributed data storage systems were built to handle data management requirements of very large websites like Cisco, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, etc. And nowadays we have the mobile databases also and the growth of these databases is really fascinating. And we cannot deny databases in our day-to-day -day activities. I hope this lecture would have given you a briefing about the history of databases. I also hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.